In this video, we're going to look at endothermic and exothermic reactions, what that looks like in an actual chemical reaction, and uh, their energy diagrams. So endothermic and exothermic reactions, right? It's just another way to classify types of chemical reactions that we have happen. And all that it means, an endothermic reaction is a reaction that needs more heat to react than it gives off. Okay, which means heat is a reactant. Okay, because it needs heat to react. It needs more heat to react than it gives off. Heat is a reactant, and that means it feels cold. Okay, a good example of this. Um, which everyone always gets wrong, is ice melting, okay? If you put ice in your hand, everyone always thinks like, oh, well, the, the temperature of the ice is going up, so it must be exothermic. No, that's actually an endothermic reaction. The ice cube needed heat in order to be able to melt, okay? It, you feel the cold of the ice on your hand. Why? Because it's actually stealing the energy of your hand to, to warm up the ice, to, to literally melt that ice. Okay, so ice melting is actually endothermic. It's taking energy from around it in order for that reaction to happen. It feels cold, okay? Versus, uh, we'll use a different color, so we don't get confused. Exothermic is the exact opposite. It's a reaction that gives energy and it gives off more energy than it needs to react. Um, so heat is a product and it feels hot, right? Which hopefully makes sense because if it's giving away more energy, it's giving away heat, this exothermic reaction, right? Heat is being given away, it's releasing more energy than it needed to react. That means it's giving away energy, so energy is being released, it feels hot. This would be any kind of fire, combustion, explosion, all of the fun things, okay? Uh, that would be a good exothermic reaction, okay? And if any of you have had those like either hot packs or ice packs, you know, you go to the doctor's office and you sprain your ankle or something, they take a little pack out and they crack it, and then all of a sudden it gets cold really, really quickly, right? That's an endothermic reaction. There, the little ch -ch was you breaking some kind of seal in that bag, in that cold pack bag. The reactants mix, and it's taking in energy from the surroundings. It takes in more energy than it than it gives back, so it feels cold. You have a nice little ice pack there, versus exact opposite, right? If you have those little uh, Insta hand warmers, you do the same thing. You, you crack it those two things come together and it's exothermic. It gives off heat, it's got a nice little hand warmer, okay? Fine. So what actually makes a chemical reaction endothermic versus exothermic, okay? That actually gets into something called bond energies and different bonds have a different amount of energy to break the bonds, to remake the bonds. There's all kinds of super fun math to do with this, okay? This is beyond where we're getting in Chem 2A, but I just want you to understand that this is how we're able to actually calculate. You can calculate exactly like how much heat is given off by a specific uh, combustion reaction. So like if you're burning propane versus if you're burning methane. Methane is the, the gas that comes out of your stove, propane, you know, you have like your propane tanks or something. Um, you can calculate exactly how much energy is coming out of there which is pretty cool, right? You can calculate exactly how much energy you need with all these bond energy things, okay? So there is a way to calculate and see exactly how much one is endothermic versus one is exothermic. That's too technical for, for what we're doing, for what's necessary for us. Just know that that's out there, okay? Really, the best way for us to kind of focus on this 
is that endothermic reactions are going to have heat as a reactant. Exothermic will have heat as a product. Okay, so we'll look at what that actually is in a chemical reaction. Okay, so if we had nitrogen plus hydrogen gas making ammonia, and we balanced our chemical reaction, there's only one nitrogen, okay? This gives off heat. This is exothermic. So I just have plus heat over here, like it's a product, right? I have nitrogen and hydrogen gas combining and making ammonia and heat. It gives off heat. This is exothermic. And literally this is how we will write it out, okay? So you have plus heat as a product versus, so you have heat plus carbon dioxide is going to decompose to carbon monoxide and oxygen gas, okay? You can see that heat is needed for this reaction to even happen, right? I have to have heat as a reactant in order for this thing to go forward. So that means that this is endothermic, okay? I need heat for this reaction to happen versus this reaction exothermic is I give off heat as a product. Okay, so far, hopefully not tricky. Now we look at what are called energy diagrams. In general, when we look at an energy diagram, okay, the, the things to make sure we understand are the axes, all right? So down here, we have time. This axis up here is energy. Okay, so the higher up something is in these energy diagrams, the more energy it is, the lower it is, the less energy, okay? And overall, in general, you're going to start with some reactants, okay? So you start at, the reactants have some amount of energy, right? Whatever those reactants are. In order for the reactants to actually react, right? According to collision theory, we remember, in order for those reactants to actually do something, they need to overcome an initial amount of energy, an activation energy. So these reactants have to have some kind of energy input. They have to give in some energy Okay, from here to here, this is the activation energy. All right, so if I'm given enough energy to go from my reactants up to the top of this peak, I can overtake that activation energy, then I have a reaction happening. All right, now where this line ends, either above this dash line or below, will tell me if it's a endo or exothermic reaction, okay? If I were going to compare these guys, okay, they start out the same, right? They both are going to start out with an initial reactants overcoming some kind of activation energy. Okay, so we've got reactants going up to the activation energy, right? Here's my reactants, same thing, goes up, right? And I always think for drawing out your energy diagrams, it's really useful to just wherever your reactants are, you can use a different color, just make a dashed line across, make a nice horizontal line across. That way you can kind of think to yourself and figure out what's going on, okay? If I had an endothermic reaction, that reaction needs more energy than it gives back. Okay, so if this was an endothermic reaction, I needed this much energy, however this much is, right, to go from this dashed line up to the top here. Right, this is my activation energy. So when I come down, I'm not going to give back as much energy as I gave in. So that means my line coming down is going to be above where I started. Okay, it's going to be above that dashed line. This would be reactants. This would be my products. This is your energy diagram for an endothermic. Okay, an endothermic reaction because my reactants needed more energy to react 
then they gave back. Let's see if I can show that, right? I only gave back this much energy. That's how much energy I released from my, pro my products being made. Okay, I didn't even give back as much as I gave in. So this would be an endothermic reaction. Okay, the opposite would be true for an exothermic. So same thing, right? I still had to overtake my activation energy here, right? But now, in an exothermic reaction, it's a reaction that gives more energy than it needed to overtake the activation energy. So it's going to give back more energy than it needed. So it's going to go below that dotted line. Okay, reactants, products. Right, because from here, it gives back this much energy, right? Ooh, that's a ton of energy it's giving back. It's giving back more than it took. So this guy would be exothermic, all right? So for your energy diagrams, right? For your energy diagrams, anytime you have an endothermic, your product line is going to be above where you start with. Your exothermic reactions your product line is below where you started, okay? And you might be asked to find delta H, okay? Uh, yes, there are ways to calculate it. That has to do with this horrible page, okay? You don't actually need to calculate the number, but you might need to identify it on the graph, okay? Delta means change, and H is talking about your thermal energy, your heat. Okay, so this is just finding your overall change in energy, basically, okay? So your overall change in energy in this endothermic reaction, it would be from where you started up to where you ended. So right here, from where I start up to where I end, this is going to be delta H. And from where I started up to where I ended, so this is going to be a positive number for my change in energy, okay? Versus on this reactant, the delta H is going to be from where I started to where I ended. So this part right here, from where I started down to where I ended, this is my change in energy. And this went down, right? I started here and I went down. So my delta H is negative, okay? So make sure you know that overall for an endothermic reaction, this is what your energy diagrams or sometimes reaction pathways, that's another word they can call this. Let's just write that down. Reaction pathway, energy diagram. It means the same thing, okay? You're just showing the direction of your, how much energy this reaction is having, okay? So for endo, your products are up and your delta H is positive. For an endothermic reaction. For exothermic, your reactants are higher than your products, your products go down, and your delta H is negative.